Is our stock market succumbing to gravity? Telstra's not going to the Philippines. The Federal Reserve in the USA considering an interest rate rise. The Oz dollar, how come it's going so high and what does it mean? And finally, the implications of the super statement of what it means to us. I'm Peter Switzer. I'm Paul Rickard. And we're, we're mad, mad about, about money. money. We've got 10 minutes and we've got the bell every two minutes. So let's kick off with the first one. The stock market's been rising, Paul, but a bit wobbly on uh, Tuesday. No, a little wobble yesterday. Uh, look, I think it's probably not out of the uh, ordinary because, uh, you know, we've had a great run. I've been surprised how comfortably it's been sitting above 5,000. Yeah, we've gone up 10% since the low, which is fantastic. Paul, I had an argument on my TV show on this. When you go to a bear market for one day, it's not really a bear market, sure. Well, like you probably could bring out all the textbooks about the definition of a bear market, but I'm with you, right? Really? I don't think it's a bear market, no. but others will call it that way. Look, these definitions, they're just words in a, in a, in a you know, in a, in a financial market book. That's yeah. all they are. For they're morons. Always, they're, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably harsh. But the, but the bottom line is this. There's, There's nothing there. sacred about 10% being, you know, de de designating a correction and 20% designating a bear, bear market. market. To me, I think a bear market has to make you feel bad for a long time, not yeah. just one <laughs> bloody day. And the bounce back's been very good, but the market is starting to wobble. Do, I, I well, it's, going, it's pulling back. I yeah. mean, it's had a great run. I mean, 10% yeah. in the space of two and a half weeks mm. or three weeks, whatever it is, mm. it's a big market. Oh, here's the hard question. How come oil prices and high oil prices have gone up? <laughs> no one knows the answer. <laughs> no one knows it. Pass. Next. <laughs> but the thing is, is probably it was excessive sell-offs yeah. in January, February for the stock market, excessive negativity on both iron ore and oil prices, and maybe reality sort of creeping in. And we got to nearly 6,000 March last year, and we're now around 5,200. That's probably where we should have been even in well, March last year. I think, year. as Michael Knox has been saying, ad nauseum in your program, there is seasonality in all these prices. Yeah, and he's been point. saying this is the quarter, or, you know, the next quarter is when these prices typically go up. So, mm. look, I think there's, uh, there's a bit in that. I mean, but, you know, it's, who can actually, it's like fruit market prices. You can't always explain what happens in, uh, in commodity prices. No, no. And I guess that's the important point. Now, let's go to an individual stock. Telstra was planning on going to the Philippines. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they say, no. How come? Well, look, I actually got to think Penn deserves a bit of credit for at He's least a CEO. Yeah, at least having some guts to say, no, we, we ain't going to work out. No. And I, I'm a bit annoyed by the market's reaction. The market sort of says, this is terrific. Yeah. You know? Stay like, at home. <laughs> stay don't at home. take risks. Now, look, as an Australian, that's not necessarily the, the way we want it to be. Now, of course, they're looking at, you know, the market uh, wiser heads than me. They're looking at Telstra's acquisition uh, history, which mm. is pretty ordinary. Yeah. There aren't too many acquisitions that Telstra's done that have they've pulled off with a raging success. They're looking at the fact that most Australian companies going offshore tend to make a mess of it. Yeah. But, you know, as an Australian, we all want our companies to succeed and grow. So, look, in some ways, look, I'm happy that they've pulled this back, but I'd like them to keep going. If there's the right opportunity, you know, Telstra should be taking it. Mm. But uh, Is there sovereign uh, risk in places like the Philippines? And the company they were working with, this is a company that's very entrenched right in the core yeah. of Philippines movers and shakers, isn't it? And who knows whether it will work out to be actually be a true partnership. I yeah. mean, uh, look, so look, I don't know any more than what they've said. And of course, we're there from a distance. I would encourage our companies, they do need to think about growth. And, and Telstra does have that challenge, but mm. it needs to be measured and it needs to be, uh, there needs to be a really sound case. So credit to the CEO, if this wasn't going to work out, better getting out of yeah, it now. Um, I just hope that doesn't discourage them from thinking about it in the future. Has Telstra got a cap on its share price because it needs a new growth area? Well, it does in a sense because uh, you know last last half year the uh, EBITDA was only up about one point seven percent. Look, it's hard, and they've they've. they've given some tight forecasts, but it's really low single-digit growth. And, and of course, you know, it's, it's still in this decline, fixed uh, telephone still declining. Yeah. And, of course, mobiles is now pretty mature. And so Optus has got Usain Bolt. <laughs> well, it <laughs> may be workers and hire it a great be, yes. <laughs> Let's, uh, we won't be using the word Optus anymore. But, look, I, I like Telstra still, but uh, yeah. I still think at $5, it's, it's, there's a good floor there, good base. This rally off that, even with this news, is, is further confirmation of that. Okay, let's go now to the really important meeting of this week. There are a lot of central bank meetings, Bank, bank of Japan and all that sort of stuff, but the big one is the Federal Reserve out Wednesday and Thursday in a US time. So we're here some, probably Wednesday, Wednesday sometime our time, maybe Thursday. The bottom line is this. Do you think 
they're worried about saying anything that could spook this market come back. I, I think Janet Yellen, if she hasn't learned her lesson from last September, yeah. hopefully, you know, these people don't get to be a, a central bank governor without at least passing dunce class. She learnt January, September last year, look, the wording is so important. So look, yeah. they won't increase interest rates, no. not this meeting, but what they say to the market has got to be is so important. And it's obviously going to be, look, we're going to, we're looking at interest rates are going up over time, but mm. we're going to be very careful. We're going to look at the data. She's got to get that you know, word perfect mm. and not go off script when she does her press conference afterwards. So, yeah. And the interesting thing is, the US dollar has really spiked on the anticipation, once upon a time, of four rate rises this year which I always thought was crazy. Like, not even in Australia do we do four rate rises unless inflation is going through the roof. And inflation is not going through the roof in the USA. Yeah, and we, and we saw last week the mess that Draghi made of a few comments. And yeah. unfortunately, the markets went back to where they were. But yeah. look, they've just got to be very careful. The markets want to hear good, soothing noise. They're not expecting mm. an interest rate increase. They're like little babies, aren't they? You they are them, little babies. Little bottles of, of milk that just warm enough. And if it's too cold, they so, don't So you reckon we, we should be in the... Baby business or the, or, the, or the milk? Well, Baby Bunting's been doing pretty <laughs> baby well. Baby Bunting's <laughs> been doing very well. As a, as a stock. But certainly, yeah, the, the market, they're so babyish, it's not funny. And I think throwing algorithm, uh, algorithm trading in there as well makes it even worse. But that's the story for another day. Let's go. We, we talked about what the Yanks might do with interest rates. That's pretty important to the Oz dollar, isn't it? Yeah, well, I've been saying this. If you've been reading Weekend Switzer now, every week I've talked about how the Australian dollar is not going down. In fact, it's going up yeah. at an enormous base of 70 cents. Mm. It really never had a decent run at 70 cents. It, it dipped into the 69s, yeah. maybe 68 for a couple of minutes or a couple of hours, someone will correct me. It really had no real test of 70. There was some massive support there. So, look, uh, I think it's going higher, Peter. Now, mm. of course, okay, we maybe this will encourage the Reserve Bank for another interest rate cut. That would probably be a good thing. Mm. But it's very hard to see that. Aussie, I think the Aussie dollar has found a bottom. Mm. Um, uh, but I, I'd like to see it lower, like you. Yeah. But uh, you know, we were at a dollar ten, and we mm. went from a dollar ten down to seventy cents. That's a huge move. Yeah. And maybe that's fair value. Yeah. And the interesting point that a lot of people don't understand is that, that over the last fifteen months, we went from about ninety three down to seventy. But that was fantastic for our competitive advantage, but it was terrible for the yeah. Yanks. And that's why their, their recent company reporting has really suffered, because that dollar is now hitting that economy. It's given it the headwinds, and it's the reason why the Yanks aren't thinking about doing four interest rate rises this year. So the fact that it's gone down could actually be a good thing for the US economy and maybe the world economy. And that's part of the reason why commodity yep. prices are going up. And that's, yeah, again, because they're obviously related to US dollars. But look, I mean, central banks or governments around the world are all sort of playing this currency game. They want yeah. their currency to be lower. Yes. <laughs> so yes. we had this enormous movement. Right. And I've got to start to say, well, maybe that's enough. Right. Um, look, I wouldn't call it the, the we've seen the bottom, but uh, I, I, I don't think there's a lot of upside in, in sorry, I think trying to look for a lot more Aussie dollar downside. I think uh, yeah. I think the currency is telling you something. Our long-term trend uh, valuation is around 73, 74 yeah. cents. So that's where, where, where we are at the moment. Yeah, so why are you whinging? Okay, finally, something to really whinge about. This super, ring the bell, Andrew. Uh, the super statement. What's a super statement about? Well, I know we've got to whinge about it, but it's probably got a few more implications than people have given the credit for. Now, this is last week the government came out and said that it was going to accept uh, your mate, David Murray's, Good recommendation. Friend. Your very good friend David Murray and my friend too yeah, from, the, from the Financial mm -hmm. System Inquiry and they made a recommendation that said that the objective of super is to provide income in retirement to substitute or supplement the age pension. Mm -hmm. Now it's only eight or nine words that all sounds good but substitute or, or supplement. supplement. Now yeah. I, I, the age pension now you can't get the age pension to your age 67. So it does call, if, if this objective, and they're going to, apparently they're going to legislate mm. this objective. Now these are words, and of course, having words in a piece of legislation is different from actually changing yeah. tax laws. Getting them passed. Right? Yeah. And getting them passed, and maybe nothing will ever happen. But if you think this through, it does call into question, why does it you have a transition to retirement pension? That's pre-retirement, pre-the age pension, mm. right? Why do you allow anyone to access their super before age 67? They're yep. gone. Lump sum's yep. gone. Early retirement doesn't retirement, make any sense. Gone. Yep. Anything and, that looks and, like and, an advantage, And why, why do you have a lump sum? Because that's going to impact your ability to... Yeah. to um, make them take a pension. To make them take a pension. So, mm -hmm. look, I, I no, think... No government that, pension, a superannuation a, pension. Yeah. So, um, look, I think the, this, there's some more to this objective than meets the eye. Yeah. And I think you've got to be, as I wrote last week in, in Switzer Daily, uh, the government hasn't got much on the tax front that's going to uh, 
come up with in the budget. Mm. I think there will be some super changes. Uh, and I think you need to take some but action. But if the so super party is over <laughs> for all the people who have saved on the basis that there would be a super party, are they going to be a little bit cranky when it gets to the election? But I guess the answer is, who do they vote for? Well, Labor's going to be even tougher when it comes to taking away the super, par the super well, party it benefits. Would, and Labor's probably likely to take this a lot more seriously. Yeah. Right? Uh, They're real party poopers. <laughs> They're really party poopers. Super <laughs> party poopers. <laughs> so um, they've been championing this. So look, I think you've got to be a little bit careful. I still think, you know, there are some smart things to do uh, ahead of the budget, just on the safe side around your super. Mm. Uh, I wrote about that last week. You can see the article on Switzer Daily. But, you know, the, I'm expecting there'll be one or two things announced on the budget. Well, if, the, if that's the 2nd or uh, the 3rd of uh, March, of May, or now the, the original date, who knows, but yeah. we'll, uh, well we have take get, some action. We'll have to get Kelly O'Dwyer on my TV show and see how serious she is yeah. about pooping our super party. Okay, so I, that's it for uh, this week of Mad Money. I'm Peter Switzer. I'm Paul Rickard. And, and we're, we're mad, mad about, about money. money.